See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. I just read from Paul's epistle to the Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 15th through the 21st verses. The word of God for the people of God Blessed be the word of God. Amen. 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 We're going to ask Reverend Joseph King to lead us to the throne of grace. Pray.
who have come out who have recognized that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. And again, we want to encourage all of our brothers and sisters who are out there viewing us on uh, Facebook Live and on the internet and on the delayed broadcast. We got plenty of good room. And if you've been vaccinated and boosted, you need to come on to the house of worship. Amen. Amen. If you haven't been vaccinated and boosted, I urge you to do so. Amen. Amen. I know some folks say, well, Reverend, I'm just scared. And I hear you, but the Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear, Amen. but one of power and of love and of a sound mind. Power, because we know that great is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Love, because love is what love does. Amen. And of a sound mind, we're going to take your temperature when you come in the door and give you some hand sanitizer to make sure you keep your hands clean. Amen? Amen. God is good, and it's a blessing to be in the presence of his saints. A couple of things we just want to share with you. Tomorrow night, we will have our annual church conference at 6 o'clock p.m. It will be a hybrid event. We'll be meeting here in the sanctuary, and we will connect via WebEx. And you should have received your notice a week ago. If you haven't gotten your WebEx notice and you wish to log in, just give us a shout, and we'll make sure that you get connected. Uh, we are asking that you come on out. We have an ambitious budget for 2022 because God is blessing us and we're walking by faith, and not by sight. And we are trusting that God will provide everything that we need in 2022 to do the work that he's called us to do. So please, sir, please, ma'am. If you can't be with us, then log in so you'll know what's going on. We don't want you to get it on the street committee. I don't know, the street committee still meeting? You know, <laughs> folks scared to go out. But um, just come on and find out for yourself. You get the information straight from the horse's mouth. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us continue to keep those on our sick list lifted up in prayer. Uh, let us continue to keep Sister Betty Johnson lifted up in our prayers. Uh, she needs uh, your prayers and divine intervention. And we're praying for her healing. Not only her, we ask that you lift up Sister Joyce Bailey, uh, who's a former member here who's going through. But we know that when your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, we are all a part of the household of faith. And I know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Let us pray for those in Kentucky and Tennessee and all of those on that 200 mile swath that that tornado uh, cut through the other day. Could have been us. And it's by God's grace that he allowed the storm to pass us by. So let us continue to pray for those who are in need. And when the Lord moves you in your prayer and tell you to do something, do what he told you to do. If he tell you to cash app or send a check, do it. If he tells you to pick up the phone and call somebody, do it. Because when we're led by the Spirit, God will lead us where he will have us to go. So let us remain prayerful. Let us continue to lift up those who are in authority over us. Uh, I don't know what you all have been uh, thinking, but I found it kind of interesting that Congress was able to agree on something the other day. And amen. I thank God for every victory. Uh, so let us continue to pray that they will find this newfound sense of cooperation that they may do the work that God has placed uh, before them in order for the quality of life of God's people to be what he would have it to be. 
Um, we want to just give a shout out to all of those who are celebrating in this Advent season. Uh, we want you to remember and don't get, get caught by the hype. You know, I find it interesting. They keep telling folks, oh, the supply chain, the supply chain, go get your stuff early. Don't fall for the okie doke people. Because one thing the pandemic taught us, we need all the stuff we thought we needed. Amen. 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 Some of y'all got a little bit more money in the bank. You were wondering where it came from. Well, I'll tell you where it came from because of where it didn't go. It didn't go to the restaurants. It didn't go to the mall. You know, Amazon might have gotten some, but then we realized we need all that stuff they had. Amen. 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 But it reminded us that God has blessed us to be a blessing. Amen. So let us be a blessing in this place where God has planted us, that his name will be glorified that his people may be edified, and that the world be reminded of the hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
verse 15 it says see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise I, I want to speak from a topic uh, this morning watch your walk watch your walk let us pray Father, thank you. Lord, we give you glory and honor, and we thank you for all that you've done. We can't thank you enough, Lord. You've been so good. Now that you have given me this opportunity, this grace to stand behind the sacred desk to break the bread of life, I acknowledge that I am not worthy, but all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender to you. Let your word go forth. Speak to me, speak through me, for your people need to hear from you. Let them hear a word of exhortation, a word of encouragement, a word that will sustain them through the vicissitudes of life. Have your way, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I often talk about my, my grandfather and how he lived with us when I was in high school. And, and um, my granddaddy used to like to take these, these trips, these bus trips. And just so happened that um, he had scheduled to take this trip to Canada. And his, his female friend at that time couldn't make the journey with him. And granddaddy had paid for this trip. He was going to go anywhere. And my mother said, you going with your grandfather. So I had to make this trip at 15 years old. and went to Montreal. One of the things I remembered about this trip is that I was the youngest thing on the bus. A bunch of old folk on the bus. And everywhere that we stopped, the, the bus driver had someone there the, to go with the excursion, and every time they'd stop for a bathroom break, dinner break, or whatever, this person would get off the bus and help every senior citizen off of the bus, and he always said the same thing, watch your step, watch your step, watch your step. Today, when, when, when we're talking about this letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul wanted to encourage them and to remind them that people are looking at you. God has blessed you to do some great things. And I want you to be aware that wherever you go, watch your walk. The, 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 new, the, the King James translation translates it, uh, see that you walk circumspectly. And, and I looked that up. What does it mean to be circumspect? Circumspect is to be careful, methodical, looking around, being aware of everything going on around you. Paul was telling them, as you are moving in the marketplace, as you're going through your communities, as you step into your jobs, always be aware of what's going on around you, not just for your sake, not that you're being paranoid, but you need to be aware of what's going on around you. Yes. Well, well, that's, 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 that's well and fine, preacher. Uh, yeah, we need to pay attention, but, but why do we need to pay attention? There are three things that, 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 that you need to consider as you are walking circumspectly. Well, why do we walk circumspectly? First of all, we walk circumspectly so that we can make use of every opportunity that God sends our way. 
you're going to run into some folks at the meat counter and y'all talking about chicken legs and something else will come up. <laughs> they may need a word of encouragement. They, they, they may be struggling and they just want somebody to talk to. They need to be reminded, especially in this peculiar season that we're in, that God is still in charge. Yes, we, 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 Paul says we're, we're going to take advantage of every opportunity to do good, redeeming the time because the days are evil. All right. yes, sir. See, all of us have been appointed the same amount of time. Whoa. Don't make no difference. Every one of us get 24 hours. Whoa. Now, the, the difference is what did you do with your 24 now, did you spend it on Netflix? Did you spend it shopping? Did you spend it reading? Did you spend it expanding your mind, your heart? What did you do with that amount of time that was given to you? Well, you know, uh, this morning as, as I was getting dressed and, and uh, on the Sunday Today show, they, they feature someone who passed in the previous year in a life well lived. And just so happened, uh, they featured this young man who was an editor for the Rolling Stone magazine. And a uh, young black man, Howard graduate, um, and he was 64 years old. And as we were looking at it, Kathy said, oh, he was at Howard when you were there. And I thought, hmm. Yes, he was. I remember when I went to Howard and I said to my sister-in-law, who's also a Howard grad, I said, you know, I might be in class with somebody famous. She said, yeah, but had you ever considered that they in class with you? <laughs> the difference is, well, how do we redeem our time? What did we do? Did we take advantage of every opportunity? And, and we can't look back and say, boy, that, I missed that opportunity. But look forward. What opportunities has God put before you right now? All right. Redeem the time. Yeah. Redeem society. People need to see in you the hope of eternal life with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Because see, you're paying the same thing for your gasoline that they're paying for theirs. Yeah. Chicken legs cost you the same thing that it costs them. The difference is, what is your outlook? What is your attitude about this situation? Are you going to live in fear of the uncertainty of tomorrow? Or are you just going to wake up and say, Lord, thank you for another day. Let's see what we can get done. If we're going to walk circumspectly, we have to make use of all opportunities. Second thing, if you're going to walk circumspectly, you have to seek to understand God's will. See, see Paul says if, if, if you're going to be wise, not, not like fools, but if you're going to walk circumspectly and be wise, then there's some things you need to understand. See, the unwise person does not understand God's will. They're going to do what's right in their own eyesight. Well, what is God's will? You know, I always find it interesting when folks pray, Oh Lord, you know, heal so and so as to be thy will. Well, there's some things we are not want to know if to be thy will. Some stuff we need to know that it is God's will. It's God's will, nobody be lost. It's God's will that we love one another. It's God's will that we lift up those who need to be lifted up. It's God's will that we forgive one another as he has forgiven us. And it's God's will that when we leave here, that there's a place prepared for all of us to go. So that's some stuff that we know. 
I ain't worried about it if, if, if there's a place for me in, in heaven. No, I know where Jesus is. That's where I'm going to be. Well, how do you know? Because it's God's will that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, if you've accepted him as your Savior, you shall be saved. Amen. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. So wherever Jesus is, that's where I'm going. We, 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 we have to, 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 to understand God's will. And, and, and wise people choose to discern God's will. In, in Ephesians 5.17 it says, But understanding what is the will of the Lord. See, God wants what's best for his creation. He wants what's best for his people. And it is up to the wise person to understand that if I know God's will, then I will get what God has in store for me. All right. Got to know what his will is. Yeah. It's in the will. If we're going to walk circumspectly, we need to make use of all opportunities. If we're going to walk circumspectly, we need to understand God's will. And third, and probably the most important, if we are to walk circumspectly, we have to submit to the control of the Holy Spirit. That's right. I know, I know, I know. That's easier said than done. I know a lot of folks say, oh, I'm just spirit-filled. I, I got to burn in fire. I've been baptized. I've been sanctified. I'm all of yet. But are you under the control of the Holy Spirit? See, the Holy Spirit can control your life if you surrender control to him. That's why Paul said, and, 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 and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, or as the King James Version said, whereas it is dissipation. It's not redeeming anything. It's, it's a waste. It's, it's expensive resources. So, so don't, don't be drunk, but be filled with the Spirit. If I'm filled with the Spirit, then there's certain things I will or will not do. If I'm filled with the Spirit, I ain't just going to go out there and tell somebody I'm going to put my religion on the shelf and tell them what I really think. I can tell you what I think without being ugly about it. I don't need to put, put nothing on the shelf to, to speak the truth. As long as I speak the truth in love. Amen. You see, see, we, 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 we have to understand that, that, that when we're filled with the Spirit, it, it's, it, it's, it's a term that referred to a, a sail on a sailing vessel. When a sail was full, that is, it caught all of the wind, and as a result of catching the wind, the sailor was able to direct the, the, the way the ship was going to go by directing and, and, and manipulating the sail in order to uh, drive the direction of the boat. That's right. So it's not the, the strength of the wind that determined where the boat was going, but it's the set of the sail. All right. Well, what, what are you saying, preacher? There are some circumstances and situations that's going on around you right now that you have no control over. Right. What you do have control over is how to let the Lord navigate me around this situation yes. in order for him to get some glory. Yes. I ain't got to go head on into that. I might be able to do a move over here yes. under the direction of the Holy Spirit and accomplish what God wants done without having to go headlong into everything. When you are controlled by the Spirit, I don't understand, preacher. See, there's some folks that 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 that, that you 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 there's some stuff you need to tell them. But you can tell folks about having to fall out about it. Amen. 
You know, I, I, I remember, I'm going to tell this baby, I remember when we were newlyweds, and, and um, you know, and, and, and we had gone home for that first Christmas, and we got to, we are sitting at the breakfast table drinking coffee and having breakfast, and somehow we got on the subject and divorce came up. And my lovely newlywed wife said, well, you know, if it don't work out, we'll just get a divorce. <laughs> my mother got pale. <laughs> but she was cool. She finished her coffee. And she waited till the next morning when she and Kathy were drinking coffee. And she told her, baby, let me tell you something. Marriage ain't about if, if it ain't working, you just get got, you, you just get your hat and get gone. This is a commitment. She did not uh, force a confrontation, but she told her everything she wanted her to hear. And then I think she told the Lord the rest of it. We, we're looking at 40 years next year. <laughs> when, when you allow the Spirit to lead you, when you're filled with the Spirit, the Spirit is not going to put you in a situation that's going to cause confusion, hurt, harm and danger, but the Spirit is going to move in such a way that at the end of the day, everybody ought to get lifted. See, there's some things when you are filled with the Spirit, and I'm almost finished, I ain't going to be long today. See, there, there's some things that when you're filled with the Spirit, they're going to produce some character in your life. Mm -hmm. you know, not, not just characteristics, but some character, you know, characteristics might show up every now and then, but character is a part of your lifestyle. Well, what, what are you saying, preacher? See, first of all, when you're filled with the Spirit, it's going to produce joy. Right. There, 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 there's going to be joy in you and enough joy in you that you ought to be able to share that joy with somebody else. Paul says in, in Ephesians 5 and 19, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Yes. See, that's why it's important that we assemble ourselves together. We, 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 we need to hear somebody sing, lead me, guide me along the way. We need to hear somebody sing, go tell it on the mountain. We need to sing to one another. We need to be able to share with one another and in doing so, encourage one another. Girl, I'm just so glad I was able to get in the house one more time. You know, I looked around and so many folk been going. I look around and a lot of my friends are gone. There are folk younger than me who are gone. There are folk older than me who like they were doing great and they're gone. But by God's grace, I'm still here. Don't know how long, don't know when, don't know where, but I do know this. When time comes, I got somewhere to go. Therefore, I got joy. Yeah. The Spirit produces joy. Uh, 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 another character, that the, another thing that the Spirit produces in your character is gratitude. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful. Yeah. I've had to cry sometimes. I, I'm, I'm thankful. Oh, yeah. Had some difficult days. I, I, I'm thankful. Yeah. Why are you thankful for the difficult days? Because they could have been worse. I'm thankful. Thankful that some stuff that could have happened didn't happen. By the grace of God, I'm thankful. I, 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 I'm thankful that the Lord blessed us to be able to put a couple of coins in the bank. I'm thankful that I didn't have to spend none on a lawyer. I'm thankful I had to spend none on court fines. I'm thankful I had to spend none at the doctor's office. I'm thankful because God been good to me. Not because I'm all that, but by his grace and his mercy. Guess what? His grace and his mercy extends to you. Amen. The Spirit produces joy. The Spirit produces gratitude. But also the Spirit produces mutual submission. 
Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. See, this is an attitude that's opposed to being rude to folk. It is, it's an attitude that, that, that's the opposite of being stubborn. You know, I, I'm right. They, 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 they need to come apologize to me because I'm in the right. See, see Paul is saying we, we ought to prefer one another in honor. It ain't about your rights. Yeah, 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 you're right. But what's, what's the greater good? We need to submit to one another. I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. I had a bad day. I made a bad decision. We ought to be able to take that and work through our differences and still move forward to be what God would have us to be. Amen. Because see, at the end of the day, it ain't about me. Amen. It ain't about you. But it's about God looking down in tender mercy, sending his only begotten son through 42 generations. He kept a promise. He promised David that one of your descendants would sit on my throne forever. Not because David was a perfect man, but God said David is a man after my own heart. Why was David a man after God's own heart? Because David knew how to show mercy. David knew how to love. David knew how to praise the Lord. Amen. David knew how to repent when he fell on his face. Yes, sir. Above all, David loved the Lord his God with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind. And God said, that's a man after my own heart. God sent his son. Yes, sir. Because he knew we couldn't get it. He knew Adam couldn't get it. Adam fell short. He was listening to Eve. He knew Noah couldn't get it. Noah built a boat, saved all the animals, put everything on the boat, went and found dry land. But when they found dry land, he got drunk off the wine. He fell short. Saul couldn't do it. Saul was a man that God chose. Everybody said, look at Saul. He among the prophets. But as soon as he became king, Saul started reading his own press clippings. Saul couldn't get it done. No, okay. Elijah couldn't get it done. Right. One of God's most powerful prophets. Yeah. Stood and told the king it won't rain till I say it's going to rain. Yeah. And for three years, God turned off the water. All right. Then when it was time to turn it back on, Elijah said, well, God going to make it rain today. Then raced the king back to his palace on foot for 26 miles. Well, why couldn't he get it done? Because when Jezebel heard about it, she said, tell that preacher I'm going to kill him. He ran for his life. All of these great men, all of these people that God had put his hands on, yet none of them were good enough. Why not, preacher? Because David said, I was conceived in sin and brought forth in iniquity. God needed a man who knew not sin. He needed a man who would be tempted in all things but sin not. He needed a man who was able to, to show the world that God loved the world so that he gave his greatest gift. He needed somebody who would hang on the cross and die for sins that he didn't commit to die for your sins and for my sins. And while he was dying on the cross, reach over and tell a thief that today you'll be with me in paradise. This man who hung on the cross, who finally gave up the ghost, but before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We're talking about Jesus, y'all. They hung him on that cross, and he died. He died one Friday evening. They took him down off of that cross and laid him in a bar tomb. He laid there all night Friday. Saturday. All night, Saturday night. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He got up and death was defeated. He got up and Satan had no more power over us. He got up and sealed off eternal faith. He got up and prepared a place for us that 
that where he is, there we will be also. That's good news, and the world needs to know it. That's good news. The world needs to know that salvation ain't on Wall Street. That's good news. The world needs to know that salvation ain't at NIH. That's good news. The world needs to know that salvation is not in Washington, D.C., but salvation is in the cross with the blood of Jesus Christ. All the blood that was shed for me, all the blood that set me free is Jesus! Watch how you walk. Watch where you walk. Watch who you're walking with. Watch when you're walking. But above all, walk circumspectly. God bless you. Fellowship 
we'll be uh, having a celebration of the Baptist World Day of Prayer. And we want to invite all of you to come on out and, and pray. Uh, the world needs prayer. And we need to lift the world up right now. Because we know that the Lord is coming back soon. I believe that in my heart. Don't know when, don't know where, don't know who. I know how. He's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But I do know this. It's not so important when he's coming. What's important is what you're going to be doing when he gets here. Yeah, yeah. Let us remain prayerful. Let us keep those on our sick list lifted up in prayer. Let us pray for one another, especially in this season. Let us be careful. Hearts and minds together as one. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us to redeem the time for the days of evil. Thank you for reminding us to remind the world of the hope that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Now, Lord, watch over us as we leave this place. Give us traveling grace. Now may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine down upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward thee and grant thee thy peace. And let all God's children sing together. Let the church sing. Let the church.